The ancient Greek philosopher Epicurus was the first to point out a paradox that entails probably the single most powerful argument against the reality of God. The paradox is simple. God is thought of as both all-powerful and all-loving. Yet there's evil and suffering in the world. So either God is all-loving, but doesn't have the power to stop evil, or God is all-powerful, but doesn't love us enough to intervene. Either way, God cannot be both all-powerful and all-loving. Of course, the Epicurean paradox is much more persuasive when it turns up in real-world circumstances. For example, the sweet young Jewish girl Anne Frank, whom the world has come to know personally through her famous diary, died in unconscionable circumstances during the Holocaust. The Epicurean paradox implies that if God were real, he would never have allowed her to suffer and die as she did. Only the most callous and hypocritical theist could fail to feel the force of this argument. In fact, theists should feel the power of the argument the most deeply, since the suffering of Anne Frank would only be a paradox for the person who actually believes in an all-powerful and all-loving God. Conversely, atheists should resist any strong moral response about the matter, since they fundamentally reject the transcendent morality that creates the paradox in the first place. Anne Frank's horrifying experience is just another cold fact of the universe, no different morally from a praying mantis eating its afternoon snack. To be clear, the Epicurean paradox doesn't refute the existence of any god, but the existence of God as most people think of him. That is, since it takes a wrecking ball to the most common view of God, the all-loving and all-powerful God, people conclude that no God of any kind exists. That is, most people simply aren't interested in a God who isn't all-loving and all-powerful.